Hello, hello, it's Mrs. Trombley. It's time for lesson 2B3, solving one-step addition and subtraction equation. And just like we did for like terms, I'm actually going to have you cross off this word subtraction because we're going to keep change, change everything. So basically, we're learning how to solve one-step addition equations. Or maybe you're reviewing that because this was part of something you were introduced to last year, but I'm here to refresh your memory. So first off, the goal of solving any equation, because we're going to be solving all kinds of equations in this chapter, but our goal in any equation, you want to find the value of the variable that makes the equation true. And in order to find the value of the variable, you have to isolate it. That means it needs to go in timeout all by itself on one side of the equal sign. And the additive inverse property is actually going to allow us to do this today with addition equations. So I'm going to kind of give you a visual model here we're not going to do this for every single one, and I'll show you the regular algebra way to do it as well. But I think it's so helpful to have something to actually see and relate with. So picture this. I have a little scale here. At least that's what it's supposed to be. It's creative as I could get in Microsoft Word. So this side, I have a mat. It's an algebra block mat, just like before. And you have a positive and negative side of the mat. There's an equal side in between, and as you can see right now, this is balanced. One side equals the other. That's how equations are. They're like a little balanced scale. So the equation that we're going to actually take and place on here is y minus 3 equals negative 4. And what I would like you to do is rewrite this as y plus negative 3 equals negative 4. So still, anytime you see subtraction, we're going to keep change, change. So this equal sign here kind of separates one side from the other, and there's something on both sides. That's what make the, makes this an equation, not an expression. Expressions don't have things on both sides of the equal signs. Equations do. So this y plus negative 3 is equal to negative 4. So I'm going to put y plus negative 3 on this side of the equation. The y, remember that, or, or sorry, the yellow rectangle, it's positive. So this represents my positive y. Plus a negative 3, I'm going to put 3 blocks on the negative side of the mat. So right here on the left-hand side, I have y plus negative 3. This equation says that that is equal to negative 4. So on this side of the equal sign, I'm going to put my negative 4. Now, your job is to figure out what y is all by itself, right? But I need to keep this balanced. So I'd like you to think for a moment, what can I do? to cancel out these three negatives so that y would be by itself. Well, think back to when you first started using that algebra block mat, and when you added opposites, didn't you get zero? That additive inverse property, that's what I was talking about right up there. So if I added three positive blocks to this side, those three little green blocks like we talked about in class, if you added three blocks to this side, so I'm going to express that over here by writing plus three because we're adding three positive blocks, wouldn't those three positive blocks cancel out those three negative blocks? Yeah, and the y would be left alone because y doesn't combine with any of those. Y can't cancel out unless it, there were a negative y here. But the thing is, if you put three positive blocks on this side of the scale, you've now made this heavier by three. So whatever you do to one side to get the y by itself, you have to do it to the other side. So if I added three positive blocks on this side, I need to add three positive blocks on this side as well. So when you simplify this side of the mat, those three cancel each other out, and y is left all by itself. That's our goal. Over here when we simplify, so I'm simplifying on one side of the equal sign, then the other, these three positives will cancel out three of the negatives but I'd still have a negative 1 left. So that means that y is equal to negative 1. So basically, we just added the opposite of whatever was on the same side as the variable, and we did it to both sides so we could keep it balanced. Um, what's kind of nice about equations is whatever you get for an answer, you can plug it right back in and see if you're right. So if y equals negative 1, then negative 1 plus negative 3 should be negative 4. And it is. Yay, it's right. All right, so take a look at the next one. We want to represent negative 5 equals y plus 2. This time the y is on the other side. That's okay. First, I'm going to set it up so that this negative 5 is on the left. And let me label my addition and subtraction signs here representing the positive and negative side. So negative 5 would look like this. It would be 5 blocks on the negative side. Here's my equal sign. And on the other side of the equal sign, I have y plus 2. That's a positive y, 
and plus 2 means positive 2. My goal is still the same. My goal is I want this y by itself, okay? I want, it does kind of look like a face. Are you thinking that it looks like a face? Ah, okay. Anyway, sorry. There's me, puppies chasing butterflies. So here's my y, I want that by itself. In order to get this y by itself, don't I need two negative blocks to cancel out the two positive blocks? Yeah. So I can add two negatives to the right-hand side. I'm going to show that over here. If you add two negatives to this side, though, you've now made this unbalanced. So whatever you do to this side, we need to do the same thing to this side. So I'm going to put two negatives on this side as well. Now on this side of the equation, those two positives and two negatives will cancel out, leaving you with y all by itself. On the other side, after we add our negative 2, we now have 5 negatives and 2 more neg negatives, which makes 7 negatives. So, negative 7 equals y. If negative 7 equals y, does y equal negative 7? Yup. So it's okay that y is on the right. It's not a big deal. It's no big deal. So to check to make sure that we're right, if y is negative 7, then negative 7 plus 2 should be negative 5. And it just so happens that it is. Yay! All right, last one like this, and then we'll move into the algebraic way. I have 6 plus y equals negative 4. Now this time the y is second. I want to show you that that's okay. If you have 6 plus y, that means I have 6 positives and 1 positive y. So there's my 6 plus y. That equals negative 4. Let me put my little addition subtraction sign. That means I would have 4 on the negative side. Okay, if you want to cancel out these six positives to get y by itself, you need six negatives, right? So let's put six negatives on this side of the equation because that's where the y is at. So I'm going to add six negatives. And if you do that on this side, yep, you guessed it, you have to do the same thing to the other side. Whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. Otherwise, it's not balanced. Okay. So on this side, those six positives will cancel out those six negatives. So yes, I get y all by its lonesome. And on this side, when you combine them, you have four negatives and now six more negatives, which means you have ten negatives. So if, if this is right, then six plus negative ten should be negative four. And lo and behold, it is. So in looking at these problems, the first thing I'd like you to kind of realize here is that all we're really doing is adding the opposite of whatever's being added to the variable, right? So if you look at the first two, I have y plus negative 3 equals negative 4. We added a positive 3 to both sides because that allows me to cancel out, right? That, that additive inverse property. Here we added a negative 2 to both sides because, again, opposite signs allow me to cancel out. The other thing I want you to understand is why I'm choosing the number that I chose to add the opposite of. In this equation, we didn't add the opposite of negative 4. And in this equation, we didn't add the opposite of negative 5. You had the opposite of whatever is being added to the variable. So find your variable, whatever's being added to that, add the opposite of it to both sides, and you've got your answer. So turn your page. And now we're going to try some of these without the blocks, and we'll be fine. So up here, I just have an explanation of what equivalent equations are. There are two equations that have the same solution. Equivalent means equal. And there are two properties that basically allow you to go ahead and add the same number to both sides or subtract the same number from both sides if you're adding a negative. And those properties produce equivalent equations. It's kind of like you know that 3 plus 4 and 4 plus 3 are both 7. You just have to know it's called the commutative property. So with equations, we know that whatever we do to one side if we do it to the other side, we're going to get an equivalent equation that has a name. If you're adding the same number, it's called the addition property of equality. And if you're subtracting the same number, it's called the subtraction property of equality. So there's your vocab lesson for today. All right, these three steps to solving this are what we just kind of talked about on the front. First thing you do is keep change, change. Yep, I'm sure you're going to be living that statement and just dreaming about it. Keep change, change. Then you want to isolate the variable, get the variable by itself, by adding the opposite of whatever number is being added to it. You do the same to the other side, and then we solve it. So we're basically solving a one-step equation in one step. Isn't that crazy? I know. That name makes perfect sense. All right, with each of these, 
I would like for you to draw a line down from the equal sign. So you are separating one side from the other, because as we talked about in class, these are just the baby bear equations. We're gonna get to way more complicated equations than this, and you're gonna wanna make sure that you're keeping track of one side from the other. So always draw that line. Here's x. If your job is to get x by itself, that means we need to add the opposite of whatever's being added to it. Positive four is being added to it. To cancel out that positive four, we just need to add a negative four. And look at, we did it to both sides so that it stays balanced. Four plus negative four is zero, and x plus zero is x. Negative 10 plus negative four is negative 14. That's it. To check your work, take this negative 14 and put it in for x. And rewrite the rest of the equation and ask yourself, is this true? So is negative 14 plus four negative 10? Yes. We know that we're right. Let's say you thought, oh, negative plus negative is a positive, right? And confused it with multiplication. If you put 14 plus 4, isn't that 18? So if you accidentally had the wrong sign, when you plug it back in, you'll catch that error and you'll be able to go back and fix it, which makes your solving equations quiz really nice because you can check every single answer. All right, next one. Draw your line. Here's your variable. I want this by itself, that means that negative 5 needs to go. So we learn with addition equations, you add the opposite of whatever's being added to the variable. The opposite of negative 5 is positive 5. So y equals, when you take a negative 18 plus 5, you get negative 13. To check it, put it in for y. And ask yourself, does negative 5 plus negative 13 give you negative 18? And it does. So again, to get this check, I'm going back to my original equation and I'm replacing y with whatever I just got for y. All right, in the next one, this is subtraction. So yep, yeah, step one, keep change, change, draw your line. N's on the right side, that's okay. I still want n by itself. Negative 10 is what's being added to n. So I need to add 10 to each side, not 11. I'm adding the 10 because I want this to cancel out so n can be alone. And negative 1 plus, or sorry, negative 11 plus 10 is negative 1. And it's okay to leave that n on the right. It's not a big deal. When you go to check it, though, you have to solve this side to make sure. So if n is negative 1, then negative 1 plus negative 10 should be negative 11. And it is. Hopefully we get the gist of how to check these things. I'm going to stop writing my check for every single one. We can just kind of do a little mental check with it. I just want to make sure you know how. If not, ask. Draw my line and change the sign. I'm a poet and I didn't know it. All right, here's n. I want negative 3 to go away, so I'm going to add a positive 3. And whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. And do you think you have to show your work? Yes, you have to show your work. Those are gone. n's alone. Negative 13 plus 3 is negative 10. Negative 10 plus negative 3 is negative 13, so we know that we're right. Next one, draw my line. There are no signs to change. Here is P. We need to get P alone. That's a sentence I thought I'd never say. So that means I want to get rid of negative 25 because it's on the same side as P. So I'm going to add 25 because negative 25 plus positive 25 equals 0. And 0 plus P is P. 0 plus 25 is 25. And I think we're done. Let's check. Is negative 25 plus positive 25 0? You betcha. All right, rolling right along, draw my line, change the sign. Here's P. Negative 14 is being added to P. To isolate the P, you need to add 14 to both sides. Another weird sentence. Negative 14 plus 14 is 0. P plus 0 is P. And negative 8 plus 14, subtract, take the sign of the greater, P is 6. Is 6 plus negative 14 negative 8? Yes. All right, decimals. Ooh, all the rules are going to change now, right? No, nothing changes. We are doing the same exact process here. So draw your line. Here's h. Negative 8.2 is being added to h. To cancel a number out, you just keep the digit the same and you change the sign. So this is a negative 8.2. If you add a positive 8.2 to that, it will equal 0. Because when you add opposites, additive inverse says you get nothing. If you add 8.2 to this side, we need to add 8.2 to this side. So those are gone. H is alone. 
And when you have one of each, you subtract the digits, high minus low. So 8.2 minus 1 is 7.2. And you take the sign of the greater, which the greater digit's positive. So 7.2. And negative 8.2 plus 7.2 is negative 1. And remember how the rules didn't change when we had decimals? The rules don't change when you have fractions either. So draw your line. Okay, so we have a positive 3 halves. I'm not going to take the reciprocal. I didn't take the reciprocal of anything else. A positive 3 halves is being added. To get rid of numbers that are being added, all you have to do is add the opposite. So opposite sign. So add a negative 3 halves. That's it. You're only changing signs. So 3 halves plus negative 3 halves is 0. Z is alone. I put the little line there so you don't confuse it with a 2. You can put the line or not, whatever. And here I am adding fractions with like denominators. That's nice. So all I have to do is add their numerators. 1 plus negative 3 is negative 2. Bring over the denominator. And do you think you have to write all your answers in simplest form? You are right. Yes, you do. Always simplest form. So z equals negative 2 divided by a positive 2 is negative 1. And if you took negative 1 plus 3 halves, which is really like 1 and a half, yes, you would have a half left over. All right, last one of these, and then we'll move on to some math word problems or math stories. We'll draw our line. We'll change the sign. And remember, when you keep change changing with fractions, we put that sign with the numerator, right? And see how this sign is in the middle? Yep, we're going to put it with the numerator. All right, so I'm adding a negative 5, 6 to the x. To cancel out a negative 5, 6 that's being added, we add a positive 5, 6. So that means x equals... Add your numerator, negative 1 plus 5 is 4, bring over your denominator. And there is a number that goes into 4 and 6, it is 2, and yes, you do have to simplify, one more time. 4 divided by 2 is 2, 6 divided by 2 is 3, and now we're done with that. So basically, again, find the variable, whatever's being added to it, add the opposite of it to both sides. Now I want us to get just a little bit of practice in writing equations and then solving them. So we've been reviewing these in our skill packets and during class, but we're just going to focus on key addition and subtraction words for these. And when we cover our multiplication and division, then we'll focus on those words. But for now, your key addition words, sum means you're adding. If I said more than or added to or increased by, those are all key words for addition. That means I'm adding. If I ask you to find the difference or I say something is less than something else, or I'm going to take something and decrease it by something. Those are all subtraction words. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to take a word statement and you're going to take that word statement and write an equation with it and then we'll solve it. All right, it sounds crazy, but we'll be just fine. So the first one says the sum of negative 12 and a number y is 8. First off, see this word sum? Sum means addition, right? So what do I want to find the sum of? It says find the sum of negative 12 and a number y. So sum of negative 12 and a number y means I'm going to take negative 12 plus y. Whenever you see that word is, you can put an equal sign there. Is means, that's what it is, that's what it equals. And whatever follows that is what it's equal to. So the sum of negative 12 and y is 8. That's what my equation would look like. And to solve that equation, you would draw your line. Here's my y. I want to get rid of a negative 12 that's being added. So you would add 12. Negative 12 plus 12 is 0. 0 plus y is y. And 8 plus 12 is 20. So for these, there's two parts. There's the writing equation part, and there's the solving part. All right, let's try another one. This time it says, the difference between. So difference is a key subtraction word. And now it's going to tell me what I want the difference between. I want the difference between a number C and, oh, this kind of got pushed. The 6 should be there. There's a negative and a 6. So the difference between C and negative 6, that means I want to take C minus negative 6. There's that word is. And then it gives me my 14. So difference means subtract. C and negative 6 is 14. So with this one, there's my original equation to start. I do want to keep change change this. So really, C minus negative 6 is the same as C plus 6 equals 14. There's C. 
I need to get rid of this 6 being added, so I'm going to add a negative 6 to both sides. 14 plus negative 6 is 8. There's another one done. Got one less problem with that, Jeff. All right, I know you're singing it right now, aren't you? You're carrying on that song, Shove a Flash Mob. Anyway, this one says negative 4 is. So negative 4 is, that's going to mean negative 4 equals. And now I see I have the number 10, and I see the words more than x. So this 10 is going to be important. That x is important. When you see more than, that means addition. If you have 10 more than x, doesn't that mean you start with x and it's 10 more than that? So whenever you see the words more than, whatever order is given, it's kind of like it's reversed. 10 more than x means you have x, and then we have 10 more than that. With addition, it doesn't quite matter because the order that you add two numbers doesn't make a difference. But when we see it with subtraction, it will. So get in the habit of whenever you see the words more than or less than, the order that you're given is really reversed because I'm saying 10 more than x. x is my starting point. Anyhow, from there, we're going to solve it. There's x. 10 is being added to x. I'm going to add the opposite of that to both sides. Those 10s would cancel out. x would be left. And negative 4 plus negative 10 is negative 14. So that one is done. All right, next one. Here are those words less than. So 6 less than, less than means subtraction, a number p is negative 5. So if I say 6 less than p, that means I start with p and I have 6 less than that. So this means 6 less than p. The order does matter. You can't put 6 minus p. It doesn't mean the same thing. So 6 less than p is negative 5 is what this equation should look like. And more than less than, those are pretty much the only times you have to worry about flipping the order around. But it makes sense. If it's 6 less than p, then that's your starting point, and I have 6 less than that. All right, anywho, we're going to draw the line. We're going to change the sign. So this is really p plus negative 6 equals negative 5. Here's p. To get it isolated, I want to add the opposite of whatever's being added to it. The opposite of negative 6 is 6. So I'm adding 6 to both sides. And negative 5 plus 6 is a positive 1. So P is 1, in case you're wondering what P is. He he he. All right, next one. Negative 11 increased by a number P is equal to 7. So here's that is, is equal to. And 7 follows that, so I know that this beginning part is going to equal 7. So if you have negative 11 increased by, increase means addition, and I'm going to take negative 11 and increase that by p. So negative 11 increased by p looks like this, negative 11 plus p. And when I say is equal to, there's my equal sign, and 7. So there's your equation. Draw your line. Here's p. We want p by itself. I need to get rid of that negative 11 that's being added. To cancel out a negative 11, we'd add a positive 11. That means that P is now 18. And finally, we have arrived at the last one. I have a number M decreased by 9. So decreased, that's a key word for subtraction. If I have M decreased by 9 is negative 25. That means M minus 9, M decreased by 9, is equals negative 25. All right, I'm going to draw my line. I'm going to change my sign. I like to say it over and over again. I found a new slogan. So exciting for me. All right, here's M. It's those little things. I want to cancel out this negative 9 that's being added. That means I need to add a positive 9. So negative 9, positive 9, gone. M equals. Remember, when you have a positive and a negative, you have to subtract the digits and take the sign of the greater. So 25 minus 9 is 16. I have more negatives than positives, so my answer would be a negative 16. And we are all set. See you tomorrow.